Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Forrest Mills. I'm an adjunct, adjunct professor of Christian theology and online instructional designer here with the Office of Online Learning at Southern Seminary Online and Boys College Online. I'm Jonathan Algren. I'm the lead instructional designer here uh, in the online office, and we primarily develop courses for the online office with professors, and we help to implement them each term. For this webinar and this video, we just want to give you all basically a Canvas 101. We want to walk through Canvas, make it uh, click on the various buttons and the various links to show you all what they do. Basically give you guys a better understanding of how to navigate Canvas so it doesn't seem so strange. This isn't going to give you an expert knowledge on Canvas. We're not going to show you every little tidbit about Canvas, but we are going to give you a good understanding of the most helpful and the most essential elements of Canvas so you can feel more comfortable when you go into your courses of how to navigate this particular uh, application in order to do well in your courses. So we're going to start off, first of all, by just clicking on um, figuring out how to actually log into Canvas. So I'm sharing my screen here, and as you can see, we're here at the Canvas login page. And it's simply easy as most likely you've already done this before, but entering your username and password if you have any issues with login items, this is something that Campus Technology takes care of, um, but you can generally click Forgot Password to get all that figured out. And there's also some support information here at the bottom in case you need it. And once you log in, you'll find yourself here uh, on the Canvas dashboard. Yes, this is the Canvas uh, dashboard. And you'll see here, there'll be a button right here that says dashboard. If you were to click that, yeah, it will take you directly to this page. And this is where you'll see your various classes in these giant square buttons. In order to enter each of your classes, you'll want to actually click on your class and it'll take you into the class itself. So if I click on that, it'll go into the class. And if I click on dashboard, it'll take me right back to the dashboard. Now, let's say you get into the dashboard and you are taking three classes and you're not sure where the third class might be. Well, you want to go into this course button right here, click on it, and then click on all courses right here. And this will show up all the courses that you've taken here at Southern Seminary Online or Boys, Boys College Online. We only have three for this particular um, kind of a mock student, but you could have a lot of classes here. And what you see here is there's three classes and the two that are starred are the ones that are on your dashboard. So if there's any other courses that you want to be on your dashboard, you'll just need to start. And then when you go back to the dashboard, it should come up. You may have to click on it a couple of times and it'll appear on your dashboard so that you can have everything right there. All right. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into this Old Testament survey part two class. This is a live course that's currently being offering in the fall two term here at Southern Online. And as you enter the homepage, generally if there's announcements in the course, uh, the most re recent ones will be right here at the top of the page, and you can simply click on them to see uh, what the professor or OTA is announcing to the class. These are required items that every student needs to read uh, in order to be informed about what's going on each week or live sync meetings that are coming up or things of that nature. And this is also the home page of the course as you enter here. And most of our courses are laid out in a similar manner in which uh, we have various information and buttons and links to, for example, required assignments and documents, syllabus, schedule, things of that nature. And under that, in, in some manner, they'll be laid out each week of the course with the required assignments and uh, related information. Uh, but in a sense, there's also a simplified, um, a streamlined survey of the class in the modules. So if you click here on the left, modules, it'll provide you essentially the same information, but simply in an outline format. And so for example, we can click here on week one lectures, and this will take you to the week, week one page, which has the lectures at the top and generally all the assignments and related items here uh, at the bottom. So I'm gonna head back to home here and pass it off to Forrest to talk about announcements. The announcements for these for your courses are going to be one of the most important elements. You'll want to make sure that if you have any announcements, whether from your professor or from your online teaching assistant, you're going to read them and make sure you know what they say, because you're going to be expected 
uh, to know what those announcements say. Your announcements uh, may come over your email if you have them set up in your notifications that way. And Jonathan's going to talk about uh, how to set up your notifications later when he talks about the help button as well. But if you want to get to your announcements, you simply just click on this announcement link right here and it'll show all the announcements that have been sent to you. And then to click on a specific announcement, you actually go to this black text right here, which is maybe a little uh, confusing with it being black rather than blue. We're so used to there being blue hyperlinks. But in this case, you just click the title that's black and then you have the announcement itself that you can read. Some professors will give you the chance to be able to a comment on the announcement and post a reply. This one is closed for comments, but they'll have a reply button down here. You can click on and then post a reply if the professor or online teaching assistant allows you to be able to reply on their announcements. Uh, one quick way to get to your announcements from directly from the dashboard, if you're on your dashboard, is you can just click on this left side right here, this icon right here, and it'll take you directly to your announcements as well. And which is why sometimes you'll see a little number on over that icon that's letting you know that there's an announcement that you have not seen yet. Uh, so make sure you're logging in, look at those announcements and reading any of the ones if they'll, you haven't read before, which will show up with this little red dot if you haven't read it yet. All right, now I'm gonna cover um, a couple things related to um, assignments and quizzes and things of that nature. There's several ways you can go to the assignments for your class. And so the first way you can go to your assignments for the class is this page we've already seen before, which is the weekly page, which has your course lectures. And most classes will have a page of this nature uh, and it's also through the modules, but here at the bottom of the page, it will lay out for you all the assignments that you're going to do uh, for that week of the course. Um, we can also arrive there, uh, like I said, through the modules. And so through the modules, we can either click on the week page that we just were at, or we can see all the assignments here as well. The next way you can arrive at your assignments is actually to click the tab called assignments. And this page is very useful. Uh, because it actually allows you to organize your assignments by date, which is um, which will simply organize them here, overdue assignments, which is late assignments, uh, or upcoming assignments here. And they're all in order in which they are due in Canvas. You can see the due date uh, right here. Or we can sort it by type. A lot of courses are have awaited assignments in which this type of assignment is worth 15% of the grade. And this type of assignment is worth 15% of the grade. You can kind of see it organized in, in that way, uh, which can be helpful for some students uh, to kind of section off the different types uh, of assignments. And so with assignments, we have discussion forms here. We also have quizzes. And then we have typical submission assignments. And so I'm going to actually pull up here book review. This is an assign assignment that's coming up soon for, for this particular class. And so, you, you know, you might come in here to, to reread the directions. The directions should also be in the syllabus of the class. Um, but you'll notice here that the, that the assignment also has a rubric. Not all assignments have rubrics, but it's helpful to check the assignment to see if there's a rubric for it. So you can see how the online teaching assistant will grade uh, your completion of that assignment. And uh, generally, there's going to be a start assignment or submit assignment button here at the top which is how you will turn in your assignment. Um, and I believe that's about it for assignments. Uh, it's important in online classes to regularly check on these items to make sure that you're staying ahead and that you're aware of what's coming up uh, next. So Forrest now is gonna talk about discussion forms. So for discussion forms are an important aspect of almost every one of our classes here at Southern Seminary Online and Boys College Online. And to get to the discussion boards, you will just click on this little link right here on the left that says discussions and it'll take you to the various discussion boards for the class. After that, you'll just need to figure out which discussion board you're going to be needing to get on for that particular week. So we're going to click on uh, this one right here. And then it'll pull up the actual discussion board assignment itself. To reply, in order to reply to the prompt for your initial reflection, you just hit this giant reply button down here, which will then give you a chance to reply 
and make a post and hit the post reply button in order to actually post your reflection for the other students to see. If you, your class requires you to respond to other students, you respond by clicking this reply on the actual post itself. So this would be like if there was another student who has now posted a reflection, you want to respond or you're required to respond, you will actually click this reply and it will respond directly to that student and your post will be placed directly under their post on the board rather than it being somewhere completely different on the board from who you're trying to reply to. But otherwise it functions the same way. Uh, this will also be what it looks like if you're wanting to post a reply on the announcement page. It will look very similar to this. There'll be a giant reply button you can hit and then you can hit uh, post reply. The one other thing with discussion boards, if you are wanting to go directly to discussion boards, you can click this little icon right here uh, that has the basically the two people talking and it'll take you directly to the discussion board. So you can get there from that icon on the dashboard or you can click this discussion board link hmm. right here. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, related to discussion forms is this people tab here. I'm not going to click on it lest I show every, every person in this course. Uh, but if you're for some reason looking to see uh, all the people that are here in the class with you or the OTA or the professor of the course and their information, you can click on that people tab uh, and quickly go to there. Later, Forrest is going to talk about the inbox button here, and we'll talk a little bit more about interacting and communicating with OTAs and uh, professors there. Um, another aspect of interaction in the course generally is the live sync. So I'm here back here on the home page again, and most of our courses will include a live sync information and schedule page. And if you click on this, generally each, this will be class specific, generally speaking, and it'll include details regarding the expectations for uh, the live syncs for the course. This is not an ex necessarily an exhaustive location. As we mentioned earlier, um, the announcements is a key place in which professors and OTAs will communicate with you. And so it's important to not only check the live sync information page here, but also check your announcements and check the syllabus for details regarding uh, the, the live syncs. And interestingly enough, this page will actually direct you to how to uh, jump into the live syncs for the course. And that is through on this, the left side here, there should be a button called Zoom. So if you click Zoom here on the left, you can see uh, the place where you can join in your meeting. So I can click join here to join this meeting tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. And so that's the essence of the Zoom tab. Be sure to check your syllabus to make sure you fulfill any assignments that are in the class related to the Zoom calls. Not every class has Zoom related assignments or live sync related assignments, uh, but many of them do. So it's important uh, for you to check on that. I want to real quickly look at three more links on this left side that can be helpful for you. The first one is this library resources link. If I click on that, this particular page isn't super helpful. It gives you the dates, the times when the library is open. If you click on this A to Z database link though, it will show you all the databases that the library has created. Uh, so you can explore those databases. If I click back to library resources and then actually click SBTS library over here, this link, It'll take me to the actual library website where I can then search for books or search for articles, or I can click on distance student services here and go to the distance student services page. Uh, so that that link will be very, very helpful for you as you're trying to go from Canvas to the library's website, especially if you're you're not sure what the library's website, the actual URL is. If I click on Writing Center, it does something very similar. And I click on open a new tab, it will then go to the writing series website where you can submit a paper for them to look at or you can schedule an appointment. This is a very helpful resource that we have here at Southern to help you, especially if you haven't written many papers or maybe you haven't written a paper a long time because you maybe haven't been to school in a while and so it's maybe been a while since you've written a paper. You can submit papers to them and they will help you in the writing center so make sure you take advantage of that resource. Finally, we have the bookstore, which I click on bookstore down here. It says no information displayed for this class, but oftentimes when you click on it, it'll come up with uh, an, a link for you to then go to the SBTS bookstore. 
where you can buy your text for your classes. You can go to the big bookstore by clicking this link as well that says bookstore. This, uh, the book, SPTS bookstore will often have very competitive prices. So before you go to any other website to buy your books, make sure you go to the SPTS bookstore first to check their prices, especially if you're wanting like the simplest or a route to buying your books. If you buy your books directly from the bookstore, it should be the exact books that professors want. So any kind of uh, error that might occur with you getting the wrong edition, or you getting maybe the wrong book for one reason or another it won't happen if you're getting your books directly from the bookstore. So if you're wanting kind of the simplest way, most error-free way to acquire your books, then acquiring them from the SBS, SBTS bookstore is the way to go. So those three links can be very helpful for you. Hmm. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, the grades. So if you click uh, here on the left where it says grades within this specific class, it'll pull up the grade. So this is a test student who's failed to turn in any of his assignments, as you can see. And so the grade here at the bottom is non-existent. But this will provide you grades for your various assignments and also a link to go jump in and look at any feedback that may have been provided on that assignment. And it, it's good for you to check on this every once in a while uh, to make sure you're, you're getting feedback throughout the semester on your assignments and just to see where, where you are in the course. And it's very convenient for you also to click, click here under course, and you can switch between your different courses to see where your grades are at. And you can also arrange your assignments in various ways uh, down here. Now, what if, for example, you would like to know your final grades, the class is finished and uh, you're moving on to your next courses, but you wanna see where your grade ended up, uh, maybe in a more official capacity. If you go to my.sbts.edu, the same place that you register for classes, uh, there's, a, there's a tab on there for you to look at your unofficial transcript and also to request official transcript if needed. So it's important for you uh, to be aware of those various things. As we are um, kind of rounding out this webinar, we want to point out a few more things dealing with these elements over here, these buttons that don't change between each course. I want to talk about the uh, inbox button first. So this button, this inbox button will take you to the Canvas messaging center. Now, this is an important aspect of Canvas. Um, a lot of professors, but definitely most uh, online teaching assistants, this is the best way to get a hold of them. Uh, usually the professors or, or the OTA will tell you otherwise if there's a different way. So otherwise I would just default to this Canvas messaging system. A lot of them will have this messaging system linked to their email anyway, where they can then get these messages in their normal email and reply in their normal email. So this is really is the easiest and best way to contact your professor or your online teaching assistant. If you have any messages in your inbox, it'll show up right here. So we've got one right here and this red dot tells us that it's unopened, we haven't read it yet. And this right here tells us that when it was sent. If I click on it, that red dot goes away, which tells me it was red. We can then see the message. And then if we want to reply to this email or this, this message, we click this little arrow that hits reply and we can then post the reply and hit send. Uh, we can also send an attachment if we want to by clicking on this little paper clip down here in the bottom left-hand corner. But now there's, like I said, no red dot. If we want to star this email in order to look at it later, because let's say we got a lot of email, uh, we can hit the little star button right here. If it doesn't appear immediately, you can just hover over it and it'll appear. And from there, you can actually go up and this will organize your email a different way. But one of the ways is a start and it'll just show all of your start emails. So if you have an important message that you want to keep, you want to kind of be able to reference later, you can start. Now, let's say that you want to email, you want to message your OTA. Now, now bear in mind that the uh, one of the roles of the OTAs is to be a helper for you, which means that uh, generally speaking, they should be your first point of contact for any issues or questions you have with the class. Now, if it's a course material, course content type question, dealing with whatever topic the course is on at the moment, you can email your professor directly or you can email your online teaching assistant because they are budding scholars in the field and should be able to answer your question as well. But let's say you're having a Canvas issue which is something that you would want to email your OTA about, you can click on this little 
button up here at the top with that has the pencil and it'll come up with this blank message. And it, the way Canvas is set up, it's really simple. You hit this button right here to select a class. So you can do any of these classes. And then from there, you can click on this button to choose a particular person. So we're gonna say we're gonna send someone maybe to uh, Dr. Pennington himself. We're not gonna send this email, but say you want to message Dr. Pennington or an OTA. You can, this also a way you can also uh, search by student and you can message your other fellow students as well through here. And you type a subject and you type your message here. If you want to send an announcement, you can click the paper clip and then you hit send and it'll send a message to the, the person. And when it shows up in their uh, email, if they're getting notifications in their email, it will not only give your name, but also give every information that, that OTA or professor knows. So it'll give like the class name, the class number and everything, which is a lot more efficient and easier than just emailing them directly. Because then you got to remember professors and OTAs usually have a lot of courses. And so if they get an email from a student, they're like, well, I don't know if the, which class the student is in or what they're kind of talking about. So if you message them through this system, it gives them all the information they need so that they can then answer your question and not have to wonder what are they talking about because I'm not sure what class they're currently involved in. So this is the best way to do it. So you would then hit send and would send that message uh, right there. Mm -hmm. So now Jonathan's gonna talk about the help button, which is a very helpful button. And he's gonna talk about how to set up your notifications and um, a little bit about the settings as well. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so yeah, there's one more essential item for you. And then I have two items as well that will be key to just improving your Canvas experience in general. So the key item for you is if you come upon a situation uh, or one of two situations. One situation might be you have some kind of glitch in Canvas where just Canvas is not working for you or uh, videos aren't showing up or some, there's some kind of glitch like that. I'd encourage you, in addition to possibly messaging your OTA, you can click here on the help button and then click report a problem or need help. And this will provide you a place where you can describe the issue you're having and um, and then submit this ticket. And it, it, it will be connected with your Canvas account and the email associated with your Canvas account. And support should be provided to you uh, within 24 hours uh, of submitting this ticket. Uh, if you're having an issue that's more related to the course in general, for example, if, um, if your online teaching assistant isn't responding to your messages for some reason, or you're having some other kind of issue, you can actually email the online learning office at onlinelearning at sbts.edu. And this will come straight to our office and we can, once again, within 24 hours, respond to your email and look into any kind of issue you're having. So a couple more things, two more things related to just improving in general your Canvas experience. Up here in, the, in your account button, if you click notifications, you can modify the emails that you're receiving. By default, you should likely receive lots of emails from Canvas whenever assignments are graded or whenever your professor posts an announcement. And it's, it's here on this page where you can adjust those um, notifications however you like them. For example, for um, if we go down here to announcement here, uh, right now it's set up to notify immediately, which is how we'd encourage you to leave it. But for example, for one of these other ones, if you wanted to change it to a daily summary, a weekly summary, or turn it off altogether, you can do that for every type of announcements down here. So I'd encourage you to look through these. And if you're getting lots of emails that you feel like are redundant, you maybe only want a summary once a day, you can come here and adjust that accordingly. Uh, also related to improving your overall Canvas experience. Here in the settings, there's a few uh, minor items. So one thing I'd encourage you to do as an online student is to add a picture here. So if you click change, uh, click to change profile picture right here, you can click on there and you can upload just a generic picture of yourself uh, that will provide a little bit more of a personal experience when you're interacting on discussion boards for example, or when your online teaching assistant is messaging you and grading your assignments, it just gives a little bit more of a personal feel. And then finally here, if, if you live outside of the Eastern time zone, it's worth considering um, just the aspects of uh, turning in assignments and due dates. Uh, if in fact your Canvas account is set up as Eastern time zone, 
then everything, every assignment in Canvas will be aligned accordingly. But if you adjust this, for example, to be on Pacific time zone, uh, then all your Canvas assignments will reflect that. It's important to keep that in mind because all of our assignments are going to be due at the end of each, each specific due date day at midnight. But if you're in a different time zone, you have to factor that in. If you change your settings, of course, Canvas will adjust that for you. Uh, but please note, you can adjust these settings if you like to, but it, obviously it won't adjust the syllabus or the scheduled documents as these will continue to, to give you due dates based on Eastern time zone. But once again, we thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions that we didn't address here and you're having any issues, please feel free to reach out to us at onlinelearning at sbts.edu. We're really thankful uh, that you joined us uh, for this webinar. Have a wonderful day.